Okay, this video was made for students taking Bio 150 at the University of Tennessee, and the goal of the video is to provide a basic introduction to how scientists use statistics to test hypotheses. In the discussion portion of this course, you've already learned what a hypothesis is, how scientists design experiments to test hypotheses, and you've looked at graphs of experimental results to start to evaluate hypotheses. So what I'll be talking about today is the role of statistical tests in evaluating hypotheses. In discussion, you won't be running your own experiments or analyzing your own data, but you will be reading scientific articles about other people's experiments and data and learning how to interpret and draw your own conclusions about their results. Therefore, what I will do with this video is walk you through an example data set to see what goes on behind the scenes for all the studies you'll be reading about this semester. So for this example, let's suppose you are planting tomato plants in your garden and you want to know whether you should fertilize the plants or not. You know that add, adding fertilizer to soil is supposed to help plants grow, but it's also expensive, so you only want to buy it if it will actually increase the number of tomatoes that the plants produce. You, um, given that you know that fertilizer is supposed to work, you hypothesize that fertilizer will affect the number of tomatoes produced by a plant, and you design an experiment to test this hypothesis. The variable you're interested in testing is fertilizer, so this is your independent variable and the one you will manipulate in your treatments. So in your experiment, you um, start by preparing the soil in your garden, and then you plant 20 tomato plants pretty, spaced pretty far apart. Then you randomly assign 10 of the plants to be fertilized. Okay, so all of these plants that are now um, have this orange box around them are the ones that we randomly assigned to receive fertilizer and the other 10 plants will receive no fertilizer. So in this experiment the plants that receive no fertilizer are our control group and they are similar in every way to the other tomato plants except they don't get fertilizer during the experiment. So for example they're getting the same amount of sunlight and water and they're growing in the same soil. Therefore, if we see a difference in tomato production between these treatments, we know that it must be due to fertilizer and not some other factor. Okay, so over the summer, your tomato plants grow, and eventually they start to produce tomatoes. And as you're harvesting these tomatoes, you keep track of how many tomatoes came from each plant. So this might be what your data sheet looks like where you have your plants numbered here on the left, this is just for 10 of them, and you keep a running tally of how many tomatoes you're picking from each plant. Then at the end of the summer, after all the plants have quit producing tomatoes, you're ready to evaluate whether fertilizer had an effect on tomato production. So here are our final data, and this first column shows you all of the plants that were in our control treatment that did not get fertilized, so each of these numbers, it represents the number of tomatoes produced by an individual plant. And the same thing for the fertilized plant. So we, again, we have 10 plants in that treatment and each of these numbers is showing the number of tomatoes produced by individual plants. Okay, so the first thing we can try to do, or that we can do to try to address our hypothesis is to calculate the mean or the average tomato production in each treatment and compare those averages. So and probably all of you have calculated an average before. To do this you would just add up all the numbers in, um, in the control column and then you want to divide that sum by the total number of data points that you have. So in this case we had 10 tomato plants. So if we add up all these numbers and divide by 10 you should get 21. And we can do the same thing for the fertilized plants. We can add up all the numbers in the fertilizer column and divide by 10 and we should get 28. Okay, so as you can see on average, the fertilized tomato plants produce seven more tomatoes than the unfertilized tomato plants, which works out to be a 33% increase in tomato production um, when you add, add fertilizer. So this is a pretty big difference, um, but if you look at the full data sets, what you can see is that there's still quite a bit of variation within each treatment in terms of how many tomatoes are being produced by the plants. So as an example of this, if we look within this control column, you can see that there's one control plant that did not get fertilized that actually produced 30 tomatoes, which is kind of a lot for our data set. So it's more than we saw in the average fertilized plant. 
Likewise, if we look in this fertilizer column, you can see that one of the plants only produced 19 tomatoes, which again is less than the average that we saw in the control treatment. So um, in order to figure out whether we can really be confident that the difference in the average number of tomatoes that we saw in our different treatments is meaningful or represents a true difference, given that we have variation within each data set, we um, need to use a statistical test. So there are many different types of statistical tests that scientists use depending on the type of data that they've collected, but the two most common tests that will be used in the articles we read this semester are the t-test and ANOVA, or analysis of variance. You are not going to have to apply either of these tests to data, so we're not going to be collecting data in the discussion, but um, the main difference that you should know about them um, is that the t-test uh, you use this when you're comparing two data sets or two different treatments. And in ANOVA, you use this when you're comparing more than two treatments or more than two data sets. So both of these tests determine whether your treatments yield true differences in what you're observing. So in this case, it would test whether our fertilizer treatment yield, yielded a true difference in tomato production. And they do this by taking into account the means or the averages of both treatments and the spread of the data around those means. And so they do that and they produce a test statistic that corresponds with a p-value. So you get this output that's a p. So p in this case stands for probability. So just like any other probability, it's going to be a number between 0 and 1. And it indicates the probability of obtaining your data, in other words, the difference you detected between treatments, if your treatment actually had no effect. So if um, P or if our probability is high or close to one, then that means that your observations between your treatments were too similar to conclude that your treatment had an effect. Now most of the time what we're interested in, um, we're interested in whether our treatments actually did have an effect and that probability goes up as P gets smaller and smaller. So in general, scientists try to be conservative when deciding whether a pattern they observed is significant. So they'll only claim that their treatment had, quote, a significant effect when P is 0.05 or less. So we want a really small p-value. So if our P is 0.05, this means that there's only a 5% chance that you would see the differences you measured if the treatment had no effect. And the smaller the p-value gets, the more confident we feel that the pattern we observed is real. Okay, so we run um, a statistical test on our data because we only have two treatments. We're going to use a t-test, and when we do that, we end up with a p-value of 0.02. So this means that there's only a 2% probability of obtaining this big of a difference between our treatments if fertilizer did not have an effect. Since this probability is so small, it's less than 0.05, it's much more likely that fertilizer did have an effect on tomato production and we can conclude that there was a significant effect of fertilizer on tomato production. Since this statement matches our hypothesis, um, if we look back up at the top, you can see our hypothesis is that fertilizer will have an effect on tomato production, um, and we got a p-value of less than 0.05, we can conclude that our data support our hypothesis. So you'll notice here that I'm saying that the data support our hypothesis rather than our data prove our hypothesis. In science, we can never prove anything beyond a shadow of a doubt. Um, so when we run experiments, we're only either supporting or rejecting hypotheses. Okay, so um, assuming that the increased tomato production that we saw in our experiment would make up for the cost of fertilizer, um, which in this case it probably would, then we could also conclude that it's worthwhile to use fertilizer on the tomatoes in your garden. Okay, so this is the end of the first video, and whenever you're ready, you can watch um, part two to learn about how scientists convey all of this information using graphs.